There is much history in the woods of northern Michigan. The tall pines whisper softly to each other in the breeze, and the animals busy themselves on the forest floor. The Menominee people speak of the many spirits that exist within this realm. I never paid attention to ghost stories. I had recently obtained a job in Hayward, Wisconsin, teaching kids the ins and outs of different water sports. It was to be a full summer endeavor, lasting roughly three months, stretching from early June to the end of August. This job was to be my vacation. I needed to get out of town for a while after a particularly painful breakup with an ex-girlfriend of mine. A 600-mile road trip followed by some outdoor adventure would be good for my soul. A time to settle. To clear my head. The sun had just risen over the horizon in Frankenmuth, Michigan. I started the engine and pulled out of my apartment's parking lot and merged onto the highway. The goal was to stretch out the drive between Michigan and Wisconsin to two days, spending the night at a campsite. If anyone has ever driven up I-75 in Michigan, you know how boring it is. I will jump ahead six hours to my arrival. I pulled into Manistique, a quaint town on the edge of Lake Michigan. Its population was minimal, less than 5,000 people. I stopped into a small shop to purchase supplies for camping, mostly food and beer. The woman behind the counter had a weather-worn face, kind, but homely. It's beautiful up here, I said, reaching for a conversation point. Not too many people, though. We get more tourists around July. This time of year, our town is slow. Gives a chance to catch up. She smiled at me as she handed me my change. I left the shop and programmed the coordinates of the campsite into my GPS. The site was off the beaten path, right by the lake, if the aerial views were correct. It looked gorgeous, a chance to reflect on my thoughts, as I was my own travel companion. Dust billowed behind me as I tore down the dirt road. It was five miles down a logging trail off the main road, followed by another three miles on a two-track. It was 1,700 hours by the time I pulled into the campsite. The site was gorgeous. The evening sun reflected on the lake and the trees stood tall and regal. The birds were chirping and two black squirrels moved tentatively through the undergrowth. There was no one else in the campsite. I hadn't seen a single house or person the entire eight miles in from the main road. I was alone. I pitched my tent and made camp, enjoying the sunlight and the cool air. I checked my cell phone out of habit but I didn't receive any signal. Civilization did not reach into this part of the world. By 2,000 hours, I had a fire going and food had been eaten. I sat back with a beer and watched the sun sink below the horizon. When I was a young boy, I went camping with my father in the Black Hills of South Dakota. As we lay in the tent, my father asked me, Do you see the branches of the trees? How in the darkness you can still see they are there. Do you see the faces in the branches? Those are the guardians of the forest. They mean you no harm, but they do not like to be watched. If you look at them too long, they will take you away into the night. I thought about these guardians as I sat by myself in the dark. The fire hissed and popped as the water in the wood evaporated. Looking into the trees, I could see the faces. They shifted back and forth, changing from smiles to sneers. They called to me, whispers, inaudible almost, blending in with the water crashing into the shore. I opened another beer. A crash behind me caused me to jump. I ignored it, assuming it to be an animal. Bears, porcupines, raccoons, and deer all roam these woods, and none mean me any harm. Noises are normal. After all, I am in their world, their home. Glowing orbs reflect on the mound of a hill, watching me briefly. I raise my flashlight, but they are gone. With their disappearance came silence. The trees didn't sway, the wind did not blow, and the water did not move. But the whispering continued. Still almost inaudible, but slightly louder now that there was no movement. I looked down at my watch, 2,300 hours. I was nervous, but I had drunk a six-pack and figured I could probably sleep from the alcohol alone. As I zipped myself into my sleeping bag, I tried to ignore the whispering. It was louder, but I figured my imagination was playing tricks on me. Must be the wind. There was another crash in the woods. 
I kept my eyes shut tight, trying to forget that I am alone. I awake to a tempest outside my tent. The trees sound like they're being ripped from the ground. The whisper is a yell. The language is foreign to me, but its meaning was evil. My hair was bolt upright and I lay curled in the fetal position too afraid to move. Too afraid to think. My breath stops short in my lungs. I do everything I can to stop from being there. I want it to end. Please E.N.D. I awoke to the calm of the morning. My clothes are drenched in sweat and my hands are shaking. It must have been a dream that I had experienced. However real it may have felt, it must have been my mind playing tricks on me. A byproduct of stress. I got dressed and opened my tent. There were tracks in the middle of my camp. One animal apparently, if you can call it an animal, for I had never seen anything like these before. The tracks were almost human, with claw marks where the toes should be. The stride length was about four to five feet apart and circled my tent. The trees circling the campsite had deep gashes in the bark about seven feet off the ground. The tracks went off toward the sand of the lake, about twenty feet before the water they elongated and disappeared. Terror swept over me. I don't think I've ever moved as fast as I did getting my supplies into the car. I kicked up gravel as I peeled out of that campsite. I've told four people this story. I thought I was losing my mind, or the alcohol had kicked in extra hard. I've done research and the only thing I can assume it to be is Mikanupik of the Menominee legend. Truth be told, I don't want an explanation. I just want my mind to be clear of those horrors.